excuse me? Still, or I'll kill you. In popular fiction and the movies, the secret agent is usually the James Bond-style adventurer. In reality, he is more likely to be your next-door neighbor or someone you'd meet in a bar. It is precisely this unassuming contact that military officials worry so much about. This is a class called the Collector's Briefing the Navy holds for seamen who handle classified information. They are warned about Soviet contacts. They're concentrating on high technology. I think that's, that's obvious. Any to find out how the Soviets penetrate our secrets, we traveled to Florida to speak with the source. This is Carlo Tumi, a former agent of Soviet military intelligence smuggled into the United States illegally. Before defecting to the United States, Tumi worked as a double agent for us against the Soviets. It was Tumi's job to spy against U.S. naval operations. But most important, through sources, American citizens, civilians, or military personnel who supplied me with inside information. Tumi says it was not all that difficult. First, you find the right person in need of money, then just the little lie before the blackmail. Say, you're posing as somebody uh, working for Honey, Honeywell mm -hmm. and is looking for some secrets from IBM. So you, you offer money for a certain detail, technological innovation or something. And once this American accepts money, Whatever, however small this amount, you owe this person now. This is a copy of the KGB manual for recruiting Americans. It and counterintelligence officials agree money is the bait most Americans turn traitor for. Money, yeah, there's no question about it. Money quite often is the only motivating factor. The recent conviction of a Norfolk Navy man, Brian Patrick Horton, on charges of offering to sell secrets brings the issue closer to home. This is where Horton worked, the Fleet Intelligence Center, Europe and the Atlantic. He worked in the nuclear strike planning branch as an analyst. But Horton had only been here for six months when he was picked up and charged with contacting the Soviets and offering to exchange information for money. Horton was sentenced to six years at hard labor. Former spy Toomey says Horton should feel lucky he was caught. But if this information is being given by somebody on his own just to earn an extra buck, I don't envy him. Because once you, once you take a, even one dollar from the Soviets, they own you lock, stock, and barrel. Either for security reasons or because, as they claim, they do not know, counterintelligence officials will not estimate how many spies plague our military facilities. One has to make the assumption that given the extensiveness of the Soviet effort, that they have met with at least some limited success and that uh, such people exist among us in the Hampton Roads area today. Tomorrow night, High-tech espionage, satellites and listening posts have targeted Tidewater. Your phone is not safe. I'm Ed Hazelwood, The Daily News.